welcome back to another video in our series on interview questions for Power BI. And in this video, we're focusing in on... Dax. Dax, yeah. of course. Um, first of all, my name is Devin Knight, and I'm here with... Aaron Ostrowski. And as we have done in these videos, we try and make it fun. We want to, of course, make it so that if you're looking to find a Power BI job, you can watch mm -hmm. this and it can hopefully help you. Yes. Or if you're interviewing someone for a Power BI job, this is hopefully a video that you can use to get questions from and Absolutely. use in some of your video or your own interviews and uh, what you should expect for, for answers as well back. So Erin uh, is playing my interviewee. She's That's interviewing right. with Hire me. me. <laughs> and uh, we're going to continue on looking at different t kinds of DAX questions that might uh, be interesting. We'll have some pretty basic ones, but we'll also get a little bit more advanced towards the last few. Yeah. So uh, some of this is more conceptual. Some of mm -hmm. this is super basic. But what is DAX, Erin? All right, let's talk about it. So DAX stands for, it's an acronym. Okay. It stands for Data Analysis Expression Language. Gotcha. And so the X is obviously the X in expression. They didn't use E's, but... Basically, DAX is the ability to extend your data by okay. using calculations and aggregating it. It works on functions, operators, constants, and it pulls it together and extends your model quite a bit further. So to give a concrete example, if you wanted to calculate year-to-date sales or compare profit year over year, yeah. you would likely use DAX for that. Any point of complexity, you're going to start wanting to use DAX to, to aggregate, to pull things together, slice and dice it. Perfect. I love it. So just yeah. a quick review here. So uh, highlight some of the things Aaron talked about. Mm -hmm. DAX is used to extend your model mm -hmm. with different functions and constraints and things like that you'll use. Uh, it's also something you'll use uh, to extend what you have in that you're not going to be adding new data with DAX. Typically, mm -hmm. you're more building things on top of your existing data. And then uh, DAX is actually used in more than uh, just Power BI. It's used it in Power BI. It's also used in Power Pivot for Excel. Mm -hmm. And SQL Server Analysis Services as well is another place where you can use uh, DAX as well. Very good. All right. So the next question I have for you then uh -huh. is, uh, you know, we did a data shaping interview uh -huh. question uh, series a little while ago. And with that, we talked more about the query editor and using mm -hmm. Power Query to be able to build on what we have and bring in data. Uh, one of the things I noticed that we could do in there is you could add new columns. You could mm -hmm. add in a new column if you wanted to. I think we might have even showed a col column example where we added one from an example right, kind right. of thing. But I want to know, when would I choose to do something in the Power Query Editor mm -hmm. to create a column, or when would I choose to do something in DAX to create a column? Yeah, that is a great question. And Thank you. the answer is, it depends okay. on what you want to do. So you're going to always use the right tool for the, for the job. And so with um, the Power Query Editor, uh, you're going to be focusing mostly on transformations, things that are done upstream, um, all that ETL type work. So yeah. if, if, it, if it benefits you to add the column because it's a transformative element, right. then I would suggest using, you know, Power Query Editor. But in terms of using DAX, uh, that's definitely going to be used for a lot of calculations, analytics, aggregation type work, yeah. a little bit further downstream. And so that's that's where that would come into play. But, you know, maybe we should jump into the the, yeah. the, the tool, the desktop, and kind of look at it, let's right? Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. All right. So let's right. Uh, transition over. You want to take us in the desktop here? Yeah, queue? let's do it. And let's actually look. So we have a slide. We'll talk about this as well. But we have uh, an instance here of the Power BI desktop. Aaron's bringing it over here now. There you go. And um, so talk us through, really, maybe start us with where would I do each of these things? So where would I write yeah. a DAX column versus where would I do a Power Query column if I needed to? Right. So um, I typically work with DAX in the data view okay. over here. And in fact, we actually have two different columns at the very end of our customer table, not internet sales, customer table. I'll slide that back over. Um, where we, I calculated um, use the first and last name, this last column here, the full name, one using uh, the Power Query Editor and one using DAX. And so here we can kind of see, if I click on this, this would be the um, expression that's used right up here at the top. So let me head over and you can see it, it works just fine. I was able to uh, basically concatenate the first name and last name. I use DAX to do it. And, and it's functional. It works. Uh, in this particular instance, it's not necessarily a critical decision whether you would make the column, this type of column, using uh, DAX or using M language because it's not going to affect performance. But in other instances, you may want to think, you know, if it's more analytical work, right. if it's more transformative, it would make a bigger difference. But this is where you would create it. You would use that, that bar, the function bar up at the top and you would start to plug in your formula to build out that column. Very cool. So then how would I do that if I wanted to do it in the, the query editor? Yeah, so we would edit our queries, right? Launch that Power Query editor, and then I've got to find that 
that column right there again. And let me show you where it's at. Full name like so. And you can see right here, once again, I use the function bar up at the top. Let me zoom on in. And it's a little bit different, but somewhat similar. Uh, obviously different, different, different coding, different languages. Is that? Yeah, in this case, it's using the M query language, Absolutely. right, to be able to yeah. do this. Now, most generally in, in the Power Query Editor, you'll do this to the UI, right? You'll go over the steps That's section, right. and you can kind of modify the step, or you can create a new step. Here, yeah, you're actually showing the the code behind the scenes, the M query, so you can know exactly when you do the UI editor, what is it, what is it doing behind the scenes. But the you other could, way, yeah. obviously, if you want to, this is kind of reverse engineering it here. But if I click on that gear icon next to these steps, because I did calculate this, I basically inserted a merge column using that add column up in the function top. But if I click on the gear, it's this is what I would see when I create a custom column. So could create it in the language itself, or you could use the UI, which a lot of people probably would end up doing, right. um, and creating that custom column. And so here's the formula, pretty simple, uh, and it, it functions. Like it I said, does this, the job. It does right? the job. So in both cases, for <laughs> this example, um, I get what I'm looking for, and it doesn't really impact performance. So both are, are sort of valid ways right. to approach the, the, the new column that you want to create. But in something that would affect performance a little bit more, I would say you'd probably want to consider using you know, M language first, maybe if it's a matter of query folding, where do you yeah, want to? Yeah, that's a good point. We didn't even get into query no, folding, but yeah, yeah but there's some things to think something about to there. something to think about, or if it's really more analytical work, working um, numeric type stuff, then then I think DAX is typically more appropriate. Okay, cool. So uh, let's bring up our slide. I think we have one slide to just kind of review. The, the main point of this one here, of course, is use the right tool for the job. So uh, here we're talking about DAX as being more for, like you said, more analytical focus, being able to build calculations that or for analytics purposes. And then M is going to be more for the data shaping or data transforms, basically fixing your data as you pull it in. So M here being related to Power Query, DAX being the focus for uh, Power Pivot. So really, they both have their own uh, use cases, and you'll pick the one that makes most sense for each scenario. All right, so the next question I have for you then is uh, one that's often debated as well for people that are new to Power uh -huh. BI. Uh, is calculated columns versus calculated measures. Why uh, would I choose one versus another inside Power BI? Is there um, a use case for one and, and, and not another? Can you talk, talk to yeah, me about that? Yeah, so first we kind of want to understand um, what are their different purposes, Yeah. right? So a calculated measure is really a higher level um, DAX measure that's used over the entire model. So okay. it's not going to be focused on row by row like a calculated column would be. Right. Um, so it's really great for information um, at that high level. Okay. Okay. So it's not something you would want for it. It's, I you know. I maybe it's better if I just kind of show a difference. Okay. Like yeah. For that'd example, be good. like profit margin. Okay. All right. All right. So here we are in the Power BI desktop, and we are over in the data view under the modeling tab. And so if I want to create a new measure or create a new column, I would work from here. So I can create a new measure, create a new column. Um, I could also do it in the visual layer, but uh, if you're doing all this work up front, it makes a little bit of sense to kind of do it in the in the data view. Yeah, especially calculated columns because you can see the results here, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so here on this internet sales, um, I've already created two different columns. So, or excuse me, two different examples here. So I have this column right here of my profit margin, and you can see what's happening in this calculation is that it's iterating row by row. Mm. And so it's giving me a value um, row by row, and it does change over time if I scroll down long enough, but this is not a great right. way to display this information. When I'm looking for uh, profit margin, I want to see it at that high level. Yeah, you want to aggregate it over the Absolutely. entirety of it the model. It needs to be aggregated over the entirety of the model, or else, as I'm going to show shortly, it, it, it may produce some errors. Right. On the other hand, I have also a measure here, and so, of course, I would click New Measure up at the top and put it in, and, and I'm summing it because I'm aggregating, so I'm using the sum function because I am ag aggregating over the entire table okay, rather than row by row. And so let's just take a look at that in our visual layer so we can kind of see it. So I've got this information right here. Um, let me add my column to the values and go side by side and see what happened. So, uh, mm. uh-oh, danger, Will Robinson. You are not hired if you do that for I me. am not <laughs> hired because, look, at I can see here, um, I've got the column coming in side by side with you know each country. but as it's working country by country, I can see, okay, it's giving me this nice aggregated information and it it makes sense. Now what it's doing is it's adding it up as I use a column right. because it behaves different. And so you definitely want to be mindful that, you know, whether if you're trying to aggregate 
um, over the top of the entire model a, a measures what's appropriate. A column is going to give you a false profit because, I mean, I'd love that we would do that well, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. So, <laughs> so the, the key there, of course, is measures for aggregating over the course of your model, yep. columns for row by row kind of operations. Row by row, here. exactly. Okay. I think we have a slide to review this as well, we right? We do, yes. Uh, we talked about this already, but um, measures are going to calculate over the entirety of the model, whereas columns are row by row. Individual rows mm -hmm. will get uh, cal uh, calculated. Uh, also, more generally, this is, uh, again, this is not always true, but generally speaking, you're going to use ca calculated columns for more categorical data. So right. if you wanted to be able to look at a value in a slicer, you're talking about a calculated column. If you want to look at a value uh, to show up in a matrix on columns or rows, you're talking about a calculated column. If you want to see something show up in the value section of a visual, whether it be a calculated, uh, sorry, not calculated, but a, a chart or a matrix, and you want it to appear in that value section, then you're talking about a measure. A mm -hmm. measure is going to aggregate over the course of that uh, any way that, that that visual is sliced mm -hmm. and diced. Um, also, the, the results are going to kind of vary depending on the interaction if you're looking at calculated measures. So as your users drill into certain values, you're going to see the value of a measure aggregate up or drill down. Whereas if you're looking at calculated columns, again, it's Static. row by row. So it's dependent on what rows you're mm -hmm. looking at kind of thing here. All right, very good. So the next thing that I want to talk about then is all about the time intelligence functions with inside of DAX. All right. So DAX has built into it several ways that you can do, and you've already mentioned this early on mm -hmm. for the reasons why we do DAX, uh, where I can do things like year to date mm -hmm. and parallel period and things like right. that. And I'm very interested in doing that because I have a lot of financial reporting that yeah, I want to do. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some things that I need to be aware of or what are some prerequisites to being able to do time intelligence? Yeah, okay, so I think the first main the main prerequisites, you need a date table mm. and you need a specific kind of date table. You need a continuous date table okay. with the whole range of dates. And so no break in the dates whatsoever yeah. so that you can calculate over that uh, continuous line right there. So you could build that date table okay. using M or M language in the Power Query Editor. You could uh, use DAX to create your date table. Yeah. Or you could bring your own if you already have one you know, in your model and you're just pulling it into Power BI. Great, but you definitely need a date table and all the dates have to be in that date table. And then the second element uh, is that you really need to define and build that relationship between the date table and the other appropriate tables. So we have a slide uh, that we're going to show right here. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, uh, I think these are all things that you just talked about. So uh, bring either bring a date table from whatever your data source is or build your mm -hmm. own. Uh, there's some functions built into DAX to help you build a date table like uh, calendar auto and ca other calendar functions as well. Right. Those are really helpful. Big thing that you mentioned is you need to have a continuous set of dates. You can't have any exceptions, any dates missing from your date table right. if you intend on using a lot of these time intelligence mm -hmm. functions. Um, and then, of course, proper relationships. They're important to make sure that it's going to actually function the way you intend it to function. Very cool. All right, so then the last one, this is where we start to get a little bit more advanced. I'd say pretty advanced. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I want to know more about this concept called filter context. Okay. So I want you to kind of guide me through what is what is filter context? Why do I need to care about it? And how does okay. it impact the way that I, I work with my data? Filter context, you need to care because it affects everything. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> right? Okay, Pretty so important. it is. So, so filter context is all of the influencing filters uh, that will affect how your data displays itself. So this could be at the visual level, the report level, um, relationships impact the filter context, DAX calculations impact the filter context. It's yeah. basically anything that filters and slices up your data and how you're going to see it. So uh, the best way to probably get into this one is to jump into the okay. desktop and show, show how filter context Let's shows up. All right. And we'll have a review slide. We'll touch on that after. Let's go ahead and hop into a quick demo here. So as you're, as you're kind of loading this up, so the idea here would be if I have a slice, so you have a slicer here in your example. I do, yeah. So if I were to select a value in that slicer, it's impacting the filter context. You got of it. The, okay. Okay, gotcha. so for example, this is one level of filter context that would play into our filter context. Depending on the year I choose in a slicer, my data is filtered. I, it affects what I see visually. Conversely, over here, we've got this pane, the filters pane. Yeah. Great uh, word connection there. It, it does <laughs> affect filter context. So. Uh, you can see, for example, um, there's a filter applied here so that if all the, the finished goods are flagged for true, they're going to show up. If, okay. if, if it's false, they're not. Um, I'm looking at English product name. That's another filter that's being applied. I'm not seeing 
you know, Spanish product name, right. or French product name, et cetera. <laughs> and so this all affects the filter context. Um, there's also filter context based on our relationships. So mm. if I head over to the model view, I can look at uh, these relationships, which are signified by the lines drawn between in my model, and I can look at the arrows specifically and see what's going on. How is this being filtered table to table based on the relationship? So in this case, I've got two arrows, so it's bi-directional filtering, meaning both tables can filter each other. But for example, with geography and customer, um, it's being filtered in the direction of customer. So geography is filtered by customer, but customer is not filtered by. But the other way around, right? So geography can filter into customer, but not the other way. Yeah, yeah. Is I that how you said you it? You just said it backwards. Did so. I say yeah, the wrong gone. word? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, exactly. But ge geography filters into customer and, and not the other way. So the arrow is affects how it's filtered into the other table. There you go. Cool. Exactly. Okay, so what if I, and we're all, we're talking about DAX, uh, what if I wanted to manipulate that filter context in some way? Is there a way that I can override yes, it or do something? Yes, yes, like absolutely. And so um, one of the, the main ways to override a filter context is using the calculate function. Okay. Actually show exactly what you're saying here um, in, by using US profit margin here. So let me throw this, this in and uh, first of all, let me highlight it. Ah, so you there's our calculation. See. So yeah. there's the calculation. Um, uh, and as you can see up at the top here, it says calculate. Okay. So that calculate function in, in particular is an overriding uh, function in terms of filter context. So meaning that if I use the calculate function, it, when anything that's created from that is not going to be filtered the same way as the other visuals would be. Okay, so in this case, we're overriding the filter context of whatever we're looking at and saying that it has to show the U.S., country regardless. So we don't care whatever whatever else you have, just show us US regardless of what the rest of the report looks like. All right, so we're kind of picking up where we left off in the last question. So I've got this column with the profit margin. I'm just going to get rid of that really quickly because I don't need it. And I'm going to show um, what this US profit margin, um, how it's going to behave compared to the others. So if you look, I pulled that up there. Um, you can see that even though I am filtering right here on country, U.S. profit margin stays the same mm. across the board. It doesn't change based on the other countries that it's, it's, it's basically next to or signed with. Right. And so if I scroll over all the way and I look at U.S. US to U.S., you know, I can see that it's the same information. But this was one way to sort of, this is just one example, to keep the data constant and compare it from a different angle using that calculate function and compare and contrast it with another one that has a different filter context. Yeah, it makes sense. So in this case, you've said, forget what country you think you're looking at. Right. I want you to display U.S. no matter what, which could be pretty helpful where I can compare yeah. next to uh, next to each other. How does U.S. Side compare by to side. Just one use case, but it's a useful one. Yeah. All right. So let's hit up our slide here to kind of talk about a quick review of this one. Yeah. All right, so we talked about filter context and how it is really goes into all the things that you have within your report that affect how your data is filtered down. So it could be your visuals impacting filter context by you selected a slicer, perhaps. Maybe in the filter area of the report, you're affecting filter context. Mm -hmm. We talked about how your DAX calculations itself could impact it. We use the calculate it. function mm -hmm. in our case. Yep. And then the relationship's really important as well to be able to determine how data is filtered one way or another in here. You make sure you say it correctly. It filters <laughs> into it. You know? Hey, that's okay. Everybody can yeah. misspeak once in a while. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you again for joining us for another edition of our interview series. We hope you liked it. Um, of course, if you have any other questions that you thought, well, maybe we could add that question in for a future one, yeah. post that below. Put it in the comments. In the let comments. us know. Yeah, let us know what you think. <laughs> um, also, if you, uh, of course, subscribe. So for any of our new interview series that are coming out, you'll be able to catch those. Um, and then uh, we hope to catch you on our next time again. My name yes. is Devin Knight. And I'm Erin Ostrowski. Thank you. Thank you.